The Climate Action Simulation is an interactive role-playing group experience, which can be run online or in person. In the game, participants act as multi-sector stakeholders, striving to negotiate a plan to limit global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. The simulation uses the Inroads Simulator, a tool which allows participants to visualize the impacts of technology and policy solutions for addressing climate change, and also delivers key insights on climate science and system dynamics. First, we'll discuss what setup is needed to run the game online. To begin planning your climate action simulation, visit climateinteractive.org. Under the tools bar at the top, you can find the Climate Action Simulation page. From here, you'll find all the resources you need. We suggest reading this page to learn more about the simulation and exploring our materials page, where you'll see many useful resources, such as our inroads training plan, the facilitator guide, slide decks, and more. We highly recommend exploring our online trainings and reading this guide before running an event. Once you've explored these materials, click on our online worksheet to get started planning your simulation. This online worksheet will be used to decide what version of the game you want to play and to assign participants to their stakeholder roles. Typically, the climate action simulation is played in a way that divides participants into either six unique stakeholder teams or eight stakeholder teams. Depending on your group size and interests, pick which version you'd like to run. From here, you can copy and paste the columns that you'll need to run the game depending on your team preferences. Once you've copied and pasted your stakeholder group columns, you can begin to fill out your participant team assignments. If you know your participants' names ahead of time, filling this out in advance can be a great way to save some time at the beginning of the event. Beyond designing roles, this worksheet also provides a few important materials. You'll see a link to each group's stakeholder briefing statements, a link to images which can be used for virtual backgrounds, and the Inroads one-page guide to the control panel, which will be used throughout the simulation. Make sure to think carefully about what virtual meeting platform you'll intend on using to host your online event. There are a few things we encourage you to consider, such as the size of your audience, screen sharing features, chat features, breakout rooms, and webcam use. With those things in mind, we most often have found that Zoom meetings support all of the features we need, such as customizable breakout rooms, interactive chat windows, screen sharing, and more. However, feel free to use any platform that can support your game in the ways we've recommended. Lastly, before you begin your event, we urge you to consider what role you or any co-hosts might be taking on when you present the climate action simulation. We like to draw a distinction between the role of facilitator and host. There can be more than one facilitator, and this person is the one who will lead participants throughout the event. This encompasses everything from presenting the slides, to role-playing as the UN Secretary General, to leading inroads dynamics. In contrast, the host is responsible for ensuring that the virtual meeting software is running smoothly. They'll be in charge of a lot of the things going on behind the scenes, such as managing breakout rooms and other technical aspects of the event. You can learn more about these roles and our tips for online use and our facilitator guide. Now it's time to run your event. On the day of the event itself, your facilitator will welcome everyone to the room. All right, welcome everyone. It's so good to see you. While this is going on, and while they begin to introduce the climate action simulation, this is a great time for the host to begin putting participants into their designated breakout rooms. Great, so what Caroline is gonna do is she's gonna send you all a Google spreadsheet. And uh, hopefully everyone is able to access that spreadsheet and open it up. And when you open it up, you'll see which group you are assigned to, and you will find hyperlinks to the briefing statement, as well as to uh, the virtual background that um, you are welcome to use if, if you want within Zoom here. Um, and then we will send you all into the breakout groups for, I would say, uh, maybe a little over five minutes. Uh, give you all a chance to say hello to your group members, but also access those documents and uh, review them quickly um, before we, we before we hear from the UN Secretary General. During this first short breakout session, any facilitator who will be role playing will now switch and transition into their new role. This can involve putting on a new outfit, changing your name, adding a virtual background, or anything else that can help you get into character. Then the UN Secretary delivers their opening remarks. Delegates, 
It is a pleasure to be in your presence today. I know many of you all are uh, joining us from all corners of the world. Uh, and of course, these are difficult times that we face. The UN Secretary General and any other facilitators will finish giving their opening remarks, lead participants through necessary climate science background, and introduce them to important game mechanics so that they can then begin their first round of negotiations. I am going to send you all into your uh, breakout rooms. Once again, come up with your strategy. You have about 10 to 15 minutes here and we will notify you uh, if, you, if there are any announcements, as well as if you have any questions for us um, as uh, the UN officials here, you can come out of your breakout room or ask for help and we will happily assist you and uh, clarify any, any questions that remain. Thank you and good luck. And I look forward to hearing the policies that you all have come up with. Well, to give them a voice in this forum, I think is hugely important. Stuart, I really like your kind of immediate term impact and then something that can sort of be sustained over time where the immediate term impact is some of the innovations around you know, organic fertilizer. As Prince Papa mentioned, um, what we feed our cows uh, as a second example do that stuff now and then maybe the afforestation program over time so if we're only permitted one what do we go with i would go with the methane uh yeah for immediate impact it's uh, methane so. so so why don't we why don't we frame it as kind of innovations in agricultural sustainability because then we can do both organic fertilizer as well as you know, more seaweed and the, and the cow's diets and, and, and whatever else. Okay, and uh, who's, who, who will be our speaker? Back in the main room, the host can use the broadcast feature to send a message to the participants in their breakout rooms, such as a warning about how much time is left in the first round. After the first round has concluded, the UN Secretary General welcomes everyone back to the room. I'm looking forward to hearing the policies and proposals that you all have come up with. Um, at this point, what I'm going to do is call forth a representative from each group. Uh, there should just be one person presenting and you will have one minute to quickly share the one policy uh, that you want to propose. Could I have the representative from the clean tech group? Our first proposal is to raise the carbon price. Uh, a strong first start as a policy. And now I want to move on to the land and agriculture group. We are supporting uh, the new technological advances in agriculture and land use, most specifically in influencing uh, methane production. So we were at 3.3 uh, degrees, but then that brought us down with um, slashing our methane emissions, adopting better um, agricultural practices and reducing those emissions from industrial fertilizers. Um, so conventional energy has, has requested that they are going to undo the carbon price that was proposed by the clean tech group. So I'm going to remove that. So our, uh, I think it's our last group um, is the climate hawks, the climate justice hawks. We recommend reinstating that carbon price over here. You see in particular this big gray wedge of energy CO2 emissions, it was going up. Now it uh, is peaking here around 2025 or so, and then uh, coming down and slowly reducing, sort of plateauing throughout the rest of the century. And that concludes our first round. So we have made significant progress here. We started on a path towards 4.1 degrees, and now we're on a path towards 2.6 degrees. And once again, you can uh, leave your breakout rooms and go meet with other teams. We encourage that. Um, and we, can, we will want, want to help you facilitate, uh, help facilitate these negotiations as best as possible so that we can come up with the best possible agreement. Caroline, can you open back up the negotiating rooms for everyone? Yes. And we would accept um, a, a certain level of carbon tax, much smaller than the climate hawks propose. Um, but what we would like to see is, and we're prepared to make investment in carbon capture and storage technology. You are from, from the world governments, right? Yes. So, you know, um, 
if carbon taxes is as high as they proposed, we're not going to have so much money to put into lobbying, into making your lives as politicians so much easier, so much comfortable. So you need to take that in, into account as well. Okay. Well, this is uh, this is useful. Uh, you know, we all uh, are citizens of the same atmosphere. But we're here to talk a little bit about the carbon tax and your proposal. Okay. And uh, one of my questions is, um, in your considerations, have you looked at carbon sequestration? Well, it's a great uh, way to take some carbon out of uh, the atmosphere, but certainly not enough to actually lower the quantity of carbon dioxide emissions that we put into the atmosphere. It is, it is a help. It's just not mm -hmm. a total solution. Um, so what about if we're thinking about, you know, the compounded effect of these levers moving? And we looked at, because the lever never got moved on applying new technology. Thank you and welcome back. Um, let's have uh, each group again have us what have one speaker to present their proposal and then we will go from here. Thank you so much for um, that contribution clean tech. Why don't we keep moving and uh, turn over to the land agriculture and forestry uh, group. We discussed a number of policy proposals. Ultimately, we'd like to also stay within uh, the transport sector. Uh, we'd like to further accelerate the trends towards electrification. Great. Thank you uh, for that. Off our land, agriculture, and forestry, um, I'm going to increase this to 3% and um, watch what happens as we do this. I'm going to turn now to our conventional energy group. We're willing to concede that a carbon tax has benefits. If it was a low, lower figure, so I will move the $100 carbon price down to $30. Um, looking at the state of our scenario here, um, I'm curious how you're feeling about things and uh, what you think we, sh we might do next. What, what, what else, what is clean tech thinking here? Well, thank you so much. We think that technological carbon removal really needs to be leaned on hard. Uh, then let's see what might happen. So I'm going to scale up our technological carbon removal here. Um, so that is one action that got us below two degrees. I'm curious, was there another group out there who had their hand raised? Interested in seeing uh, the value of new technology. As I adjust this, notice what happens here. This orange uh, line that is currently non-existent will rise up. And I think that's a good place for us to stop for now. Um, so we did get below two degrees. So everyone uh, give yourselves a round of applause. You know, congratulations, kudos to everyone. Uh, this is a much better future than we started with. And we're gonna shift over into the debrief section. So I am going to uh, shake off my roll, um, shift out of the, those rolls, So here's the scenario that we created, just as a recap of what we did here. Um, and actually, I'm gonna grab the scenario link. I'm gonna share it with you all. You can check it out yourself. You can share it, um, uh, post it onto social media. If you're that kind of a person, that would be great. Um, so what we did here, so um, there is a big subsidy in renewable energy as well as a breakthrough in new technology, um, a small initial and We're gonna take a minute of silence here. And I want you to think about what you would love about this particular future that we've generated or one similar to it. What are some of the aspects and qualities uh, to uh, this, this kind of a world that you would really love? And I'm gonna um, watch my watch here. So just take one minute silently, please. Would someone be willing to uh, raise their hand maybe and um, share? Uh, what I like about it is clean, quiet streets with a lot of electric vehicles. I like that there's uh, going to be less air pollution if we go to more renewable source resources of energy. 
better health outcomes, better healthier living for everybody. I like the idea of affordable energy coupled with clean air, better air quality. I would really like to see most of the energy in the world not generated by huge corporations, but by people putting solar farms, solar panels in their backyard and on the roofs and contributing to um, energy democracy. Thank you all who did share. That was pretty powerful to have those images of cleaner air and quieter freeways and m more positive social justice actions just happening as a result of, uh, of this kind of a world being created. Um, and uh, I wanted to, to also just step back a little bit and think about this, uh, this exercise and uh, the scenario we created. And I'm curious whether anyone has any reflections about things that surprise them. The debrief portion of the game can be customized to fit the unique needs of your group. It can run for only a few minutes or it can be used as a longer period for reflection on the feelings and insights that arose throughout the simulation. The debrief is a great time to let participants speak up and share their thoughts. Although people may mention their fear or anxiety, it's also important to try and listen to this and then move on to focusing on inspiring hope and collective action. All right, you all, um, thank you so much. What a, what a great time to spend with you all uh, in, you know, in all of our different corner pockets of the world. Uh, again, just so appreciate everything you bring. After concluding your session, we encourage you to use the Share Your Scenario feature on the Enroads Simulator and share it with your community via social media or email. If you do, be sure to hashtag Enroads. After you have run your climate action simulation, always remember to register your event on the Climate Interactive website. This information helps us keep track of our events being run around the world and allows us to keep our tools and experiences freely available. The Climate Action Simulation is a transformative experience that delivers critical insights on high leverage climate solutions. The simulation is free for all to run and makes for a fun and engaging group event for almost any audience. Now that you know the basics, it's time for you to run your own event. With your help, we can make a real impact in addressing climate change and together we can create a better future. To learn more about the Climate Action Simulation, the Enroads Simulator, and our other tools and experiences, please visit inroads.org.